What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend to debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. What a better way to do that than by the power of conversation. I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson. Joining me again, the host table, Miss Rose Locke. Rose, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, he's back with us. This is uh, installment two of three, oh, three at yeah. least for now. That's right. Uh, Lord knows you'll be back. Yeah. Uh, Tim Sanford. Tim, how are you doing, my friend? Good. Maybe I should be using Paul's term of like, if the Lord's willing, I'll there you be go. back here. I'll so be back if I come again, back, we know will, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's good. You're learning. Got it. That's great. Got to fit it in, man. Got to fit in. <laughs> Guys, let's jump into a Sunday in review. You know the deal around here, Rose. I'm going to come your way first, and we'll see what uh, stood out at FBC this past wow, weekend wow. amidst a very busy auditorium full of wood. Oh, yeah, it's and so much fun. It looks so cool already. Sometimes ask me, ask me some of the background stuff. Oh, yeah. We'll have to have like a point. Fellowship Family yeah, podcast exactly. or something. exactly. Super fun what's going on out there. Acts 19. Um, yeah, Acts 19. Well, I'll just say, you know, um, Tim, we all... You've done such a great job of just getting that mantra in our head. You know, you're you're thinking determines your attitude, attitude, which determines, determines your actions. actions yep. Right. You've done such a great yeah. job of getting that in our head. You do such a great job of of coming back around to it. But one of the things that struck me, and we were just talking about it, I think you really just went over it in F two. Yeah. Um, I was nearby during all the sermons. Um, I listened to F one and F two, um, but. Uh, when you got to verse eight and you said he entered this, it says, and he entered the synagogue and continued speaking out boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading. Right. And you mentioned just as an aside, not even as one of your main points that like the reasoning is the thinking mm -hmm. and the persuading is getting to the heart. And I just yeah. thought, so here's more evidence, yes. right? Of that. Yes. And then, and then, a, and yes. then I think it was a different sermon. Um, you said, like you talked about, um, but when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way, mm -hmm. and then you said, well, you can see there, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? right? So yeah. then just this continual way that the the relationship of the way our hearts and our mouths and our attitude and our yeah. actions all interact, all I just thought was great. Yeah, thanks. And then the other thing that I really enjoyed was your whole contrast about like, okay, so we see, we see miracles, right? We see... Um, Paul performing the miracles right. with the handkerchiefs, right. which is just, you know, crazy, yep. and God using that for his glory, right? Then we see these people trying to perform miracles who aren't, yeah. right. you know, doing it the right way. Right. And we see God using that for his glory, too. So this whole idea that in the presence of miracles, God is glorified, and in the absence of miracles, God is glorified. So the idea that God is going to use all of these things to glorify Isn't himself, that, that contrast, I just thought, yeah. like, those those are the two things that stood out to me. And I can't even express right now if they stood out to me because of one teaching that you had, or if they yeah. stood out to me because <laughs> I was able to hear, yeah. you know, three times, yeah. plus listen just a little bit this morning as I was preparing to come yeah. here. So just some yeah. really cool things that just you want to chew on even more. Yeah. Like I even, I wrote this note, my notes, right? I wrote this note <laughs> Color -coded and then I and highlighted everything. it in pink. <laughs> So, so I can just so write it down and highlight it Hang on though, too. Rose, you got yeah. pink and blue. So what? what's the deal? And, and yellow. Oh, what does pink, pink mean? Well, the, female the, thinking and blue is male thinking. <laughs> No, that is not true. <laughs> that is and not true. No, yellow's the, the heresy. Is that what it is? No, the blue is like place name people and places. Okay, right. So I have people and places highlighted, um, and and just the pink is something that really stood out to me. Mm. The yellow actually at the bottom is actually. This goes back to your sermons earlier, Caleb, where mm -hmm. you were talking about like the word of God and them, like you were talking about how they like. Um, you were, you were pointing out L-Y words and how they were like um, devoting themselves continually to uh, sure. to the pra to prayer. And here it's talking about the word of the Lord was growing mightily and prevailing. Mm -hmm. And so I was just making note of how those cool. L-Y words related to the word of God and how the word of God inputs acts. That's yeah. not related to your sermon. I'm so sorry. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. What matters yeah. is this what so, the word says. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. 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 Anyway. yeah. So that, those are kind of my thoughts yeah. from the things I was able to glean from multiple yeah. listenings this yeah. weekend. And I, I, I always love it, Rose, because to me, you're very observant. You pick things up uh, that sometimes go past people and you highlight those. And I appreciate that. And, you know, talking about God being able to be glorified, like in miracles and without miracles mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And again, 
in my mind, it comes right back to, well, we're seeing the sovereignty of God. He's in charge all the yeah. time, right? Like, yes. And it doesn't matter if the world is trying to do something. These guys were trying to, well, we're going to use the name of Jesus to make these things happen. So they have a ulterior motive, but isn't God incredible at how he can turn that? And now the name of God is, the name of the Lord Jesus is magnified as a result of this contrast. It's just, it just continues to blow your mind it as does. to how awesome the God that we serve works. Right. And I, I, I think I loved it and pulled it out because sometimes in our world, you'll hear people like get all caught up in these things. Like I was thinking about the handkerchief thing and how, you know, like you'll have televangelists, you know, write your letter and you'll get yes. the prayer cloth and it, yes. you know, kind of a thing. And I was thinking about how we in the church can get all caught up in like that little tiny detail and feel like how is that detail how is that detail yes. working today and god's going to use it today in the same way and that's what i loved about that contrast right there because god is going to glorify his name and he's mm. going to use whatever he wants to or needs yep. to in order to do that yep. it's not who touched it and when right. it's what god wanted to that's do right. in his plan in that moment that's right. and yeah. I, that really stuck out to me tim it's just yeah. an excellent example of that kind of thing mm, god yeah. god uses what he wants to in the moment right and we get to sit and be part of that right you know? i think he said a, a two <clears throat> two sermons ago but god works in ways so that he's the one that that gets the yes. glory and the implication was n not us but so right. often we live that way as if right. we're we're bringing god along with us we almost place god's identity in us a little mm -hmm. bit right and we try to do all these things often for good reasons or for what we feel like we feel called to do but instead of understanding the opposite is in fact what's happening and we get to see the early church wrestle with what is god's will is it this door or is it not because paul paul's mm -hmm. going through that he's visiting all these towns he's knocking on doors that sometimes those people want to kill him next door right. somebody's ready to believe like how often then in our life is god working yeah. in that exact same way where there's opportunity it's exciting yeah. it's exciting to yeah. read about right and it, i think the whole thing with them like the apollos and um priscilla and aquila that we talked about a couple weeks ago i just think that that's more evidence of that right mm -hmm. they're just they're just making their tents right and going where god opens the door to go and in the meantime proclaiming the word of christ mm -hmm. they're not setting out to do this great thing or they're not wrapping it all up in themselves mm -hmm. they're just doing they're just doing yeah. life yeah. and glorifying God in the process of doing life. And God is using them as a result right. of that. Right. Which is, again, uh, okay, we've talked before about the word discipleship and how that makes people nervous. And uh, what does all that mean? And can I do this? Sounds and all that intense. kind of stuff, yeah. right? But when you start thinking through what you're just talking about, which is ultimately God at work, um, that the sun might be preeminent, that in all things he is preeminent, right? Like... The more I get a hold of that truth, or maybe that truth gets a hold of me, the more things like the subject of discipleship or an event in my life, whether I'm a tent maker, it really doesn't matter. What matters is, Lord, I'm delighted that you are seeking to see your son get preeminence through me. And if that means I get to disciple so-and-so, I don't have to now be consumed with, uh, well, am I up to the task or, you know, like there, there doesn't need to be any reason why I have to, if I'm self-oriented, I will be. All that will, mm -hmm. you know, oh man, maybe I'm a tent maker and I feel like, well, I'm not, I'm not really contributing much or whatever. That's self-oriented, right? But when I'm God-oriented, yes, we want to see him being raised up. Then if he wants to use me making tents, so be it. And if he wants to use me in regards to a coffee, uh, you know, date with somebody so I can disciple them, so be it. And I stumble along, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I told you guys afterwards, my kids told me I used miracle to define this. And then I used the same word miracle to define this when I should have said magic, right? Well, you can get all consumed with that. Oh my word, what would people think? And so that was stupid or whatever you want to say. But at the end of the day, I have the privilege of keeping him in mind. And then those things, oh, do I not want to do that? Yeah, I don't want to be miscommunicating to sure. people, but it doesn't define who I am because he's already defined it and he gets the preeminence out of all that. It just keeps all coming. It yeah. just mm -hmm. all comes back it to does. him. And I mean, and Tim and I even had a conversation about like a technical glitch, which is, is incredibly minor, sure. but it's the area, it's an area that's in my purview. Yeah. So I can get overly consumed with that. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I want to do my diligence and I want to do it well, but I also want to recognize that God is ultimately sovereign over mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah. And so the technical glitch does not, it, it, it is ultimately for his glory and for his mm -hmm. good and how I react to that and handle it and how the people who are impacted by it react and handle yes. it mm -hmm. then is a reflection of God and his glory, mm -hmm. right? And so he works I do my diligence on the front end to try to prevent glitches like right. battery remotes dying in the middle of the second <laughs> sermon. Um, but but at the same time, I understand that God is glorified in that mm -hmm. process, right? So God is glorified in the way Tim handles it. God is glorified in the call to the technician to sit up and, you know, to do yeah. a better job of engaging in that moment. And so, it, like, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's that's part of what we're talking about mm -hmm. here is how God just uses us well, to glorify it, himself yes. in the process as we walk. Yes. Who's big enough to get in God's way? Like we, we yeah. can elevate something to be like, oh, that that's going to be a problem, yeah. you know. And and yes, we can strive for excellence and do what we can, and, right. and that's what's so cool about. And you just alluded to this. It all comes back to that. Even being a part of the service, there's a whole lot more than the sermon. There, there's the worship. There's the the all the announcements even tie into a spiritual reality, so that there's a reason for everything we're doing, and and we can totally. demonstrate that to somebody. Because I'm hearing you noticed a technical glitch, and you had family members who said, "Ha ha, dad," or whatever you said. Yeah. Miracle yeah. twice. A new person, I I bet noticed neither. But you know, like who, yeah. whatever the Lord's going to do through some of that yes. stuff, especially yes. if we're on staff. Lord knows yeah. we can get bogged down with a you know shoot that didn't. That didn't go as planned or mm -hmm. whatever, but we are not called to be successful. We're called to be obedient. Yes. That's exactly right. Regardless if, of the success. And if there's yeah. anything, if there's one area that I feel like that God has really grown me in in my years on staff here, and it's through yeah. discipleship of people like um, Mike Lukens and Mark Carey building into me this idea that, yes, we want things to be done with excellence and we want them to be done really well, but God mm -hmm. is sovereign. And in that moment where that person in the congregation is distracted because mm -hmm. the light bulb blows out or whatever happens, the distraction is somehow God building well, into and, them. That's part of them. And what growing, is what does know? it say? Yeah. Oh, this isn't a this isn't a temple of excellence. It's a yeah. bunch of people. Yeah. Exactly. It's a bunch of people exactly. coming together to right. yeah. I, I love it when a when a speaker slips up or if there's a small little like, oh I don't I don't know if you meant that or that. It it humanizes to the point where it's like, oh, there that's Mark yeah. up there. That's yeah. Tim. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. you, if you say if you say Pastor Carey to his face, he rolls his eyes. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. what are you talking right. about? Right. Uh, and that that that's one of the reasons we started yeah. this podcast. Man, how can we get whoever's in the pulpit in a context where maybe some people can hear? These are these are our people. Yeah. Like the, yeah. they're hearing and they're yeah. wrestling and they're right, having right, thoughts right. about the the sermon just like we are. And before you know it, it's it's people coming together, the power of conversation going like, okay, what did the Lord do this weekend and how did it impact you? Yeah. Yes. Oftentimes the encouragement we crave is happening in the life of somebody near us and that's cool to to discover yeah, that. Yeah, it's really true. I was in a meeting this morning um, and um, one of the coolest things happened in the meeting and I've been pondering it ever since. And the cool thing that happened in the meeting is like we're str we're doing what we do, you know, strategizing, mm -hmm. thinking about how to communicate things well, thinking about how to impact and disciple our congregation. We're doing all those kinds of things. And someone in the meeting stops, kind of stops the meeting and says, my worship response to that is. And it was this really personal, transparent moment. And I just thought I want to search for more of those mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. like meeting times, you know, more like in this moment, yeah. like, like this, my worship response to the sermon was okay. You know, like my thinking and my heart and the way I speak, like those are all things I want to be more bold for Christ. I want God to be glorified and lifted up mm -hmm. and myself mm -hmm. to not be. And that's mm -hmm. kind of my worship response to, to what you taught this weekend, yeah. Tim. And hopefully that's an encouragement. It is very heart, much so. Yes, you know? very much. Yeah. yeah so. There's two words that keep coming to my mind as you guys are talking. And those are the words liberty and grace. Like mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So the, the word of God says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, right? So if the spirit of God is at work here, then, then we should be experiencing that freedom. So whether it's a glitch and, and how do I handle that, right? Am, am I free to um, let go of it and, mm -hmm. and not see it as a reflection on who God declares me to be, right? Like right? My fr yeah. is there freedom that comes with all of that? And then there's the interaction with each other where grace now, like 
okay, so this happened. So does somebody get all upset with another person <laughs> or are they gracious? Why? Because the life of Christ is being lived out. Yes. They're, they're yielding, right. right? And the spirit of God is going to show this individual who's described as full of grace and truth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So there it is. And, and as we walk in that, it's not, I was going to say, it's not so much about the sermon, although obviously there's importance there, sure. but it's the, it becomes a context just like any other context of life. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not, it's not sacred in the sense of it's pulled out and it's, Oh, look at this. And you know, no one can be on the pulpit at this point in time where you'll be killed by lightning or whatever <laughs> yeah, stupid yeah, yeah. stuff. Right. But it's just another aspect of normalcy of life where the spirit of God can be at work and, and Liberty is where we, the realm we live in and grace is part of that yeah. expression of the life of Christ. Yeah. Here's the honest truth. I'm wrestling because on uh, FSAT, I felt like I was full of energy. Hmm. And I felt like of the three uh, times, sermons, whatever, um, that was the most, I don't know what term you want to use it about it, but I, I felt good about that, so to speak. So I go home and I felt like I was just, being challenged in my own heart of, you know what, Lord, I don't want my energy to be what is... What um, defines an act, what defines the act. Yeah, and, that, and yeah. that people think, oh, you're energetic. No, I want them to catch what you want said, right? So, you know, just kind of wrestling with that a little bit. And then I, I told you before we started, I felt like the nine o'clock service was my most flat one, right? Interesting how then but in that half hour of wait... Uh, there was there was a time in there where the Lord, it was like the Lord was saying to me, obviously that he doesn't speak, right? But it was like the Lord was saying, um, okay, son, so you've had what you think was your most elevated <laughs> one, yeah. and you think you had your your lowest one here, and you know what? I can use either one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really matter whether you're excitable or not, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, what matters is that you're going to be a vessel. If you just let me use you, I'll, I'm going to accomplish what I'm wanting to accomplish through that. Mm -hmm. And it was it was just encouraging. No one else knew that, right? Sure. Like yeah. all this was happening in my own heart and mind. And then I looked back on the ten forty five one, and I thought, you know, Lord, it, like it wasn't that I um, wasn't that I was so consumed with my energy level or lack of it, but I just felt like the ten forty five was much more. You know what, Lord, that to me was uh, more of an expression of a heart that is okay with, it doesn't really matter. Those things don't matter. Because at one point I actually thought about calling you up, Rose, and saying, hey, could you put a, could you put a chair up there so I can just sit? And I'll and I mm -hmm. I'll hold on to the chair and I won't move and I won't use my hands oh, and I'll bless do your you heart. know like, like yeah. but just, then you wouldn't be you I wouldn't so be that, me no, and and that it was like the Lord, been, yeah and I felt like the Lord <laughs> was saying good. son and that's, and if you that's not the way I want to use you if you had called and asked honestly if Tim Sanford had called yeah. and asked me that question I would have been like Tim are you sure yeah yeah are you feeling okay yeah. I'm just not sure that's wise <laughs> because then we would have seen Tim like all tense and not yeah. moving and then yeah. it wouldn't have gone well I I. Just my opinion. <laughs> but, and I appreciate that too. But, yeah. the, but again, what we've come back to is um, the wonder of God using his word mm -hmm. to speak to different people's hearts. And he uses us different. Like you get up there, you act different. Mark gets up there, he acts different. Mm -hmm. You should not be under any pressure because of liberty and because of mm -hmm. grace. You shouldn't be under any pressure to think that you have to act like me or vice versa, mm -hmm. right? Like there's, and there's a freedom and there's people who are being blessed because the person of Caleb is being used by God to speak those truths that they wouldn't catch from the person like me, right? Mm -hmm. And then vice versa. And he just, he, again, he's just working all of these things. Yeah. And for every one of us um, to be able to rejoice in that and trust him for what we're talking a message. What about issues of life mm -hmm. that he brings to us that are very customized to, to our us. needs, yeah. our moment? Well, and I think yeah. like I, it was, it's so interesting that you should say all that because I, again, I listened to F1. I, I, well, I had told Tim, my, the intention of my heart was to really engage in the sermon at F sat. And then we had this technical glitch on Saturday night that required my attention and I was not able to fully engage. So I was, I left Saturday night slightly disappointed at that. So when I came back on Sunday morning, I was able to fully engage um, in F1. We were able to kind of work through the glitches and 
Um, so I, I did engage in F1 and, and I kind of went, oh, this is, you know, this is a good sermon. And I took my notes and I'm doing my color coding my thing. Well, then I was able again to engage in F2 and then F2, I, I went back and took notes again because a lot of what I'll do is just follow my notes from the first sermon, yeah. but to go back, I because I started writing because that's when this idea of the reasoning and persuading, the thinking mm. in the heart came out. And then Tim, also in that sermon, like you said that you, you really went into bold, like the idea of talking yeah. boldly and how that comes out, like the lack of us being bold comes out in like our selfishness and our lack of trust of the Lord. And you started to make these points that I just couldn't write down fast enough. Mm -hmm. So to me, that F2 sermon personally impacted me stronger than the others. I appreciate, I really do appreciate the conversation went here because I don't, I don't know how much that's known around here. Like there, here's the Saturday night and then you take a yeah. night little break and then there's two and they can feel yeah, very different. You very can much. say things that yeah. are different. We know people ought to know, yes, we prepare. Yes, we, we baptize what we're trying to communicate in prayer and make it biblical. But you're also going to get up there, have to take a deep breath and get out of the Lord's way mm-hmm. because yeah. he's going to work in ways. And so I, I appreciate that we know now that you left FSAT going like, sweet. <laughs> she left FSAT going, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And that's awesome yeah. because that's a, a yeah. perception bias for both of you, and right. we can all fall victim to that. So that's what that service was like. You know, yeah. I grew up here. You know how many times I left going like, yeesh, or whatever? Yeah. Like, that's what that service was like. Man, that could have been like so many things for so many different people. Mm-hmm. And the Lord knows the hearts and the minds right. of the people that are in there. And whatever they needed, yeah. was right. it what you planned? Here's what you need? and the, Probably not. Uh, right. If you ask me what I think people need out of what I'm trying to communicate, I bet the Lord has exactly in mind what they well, need. And I mean, I, Tim and I had a conversation on Sunday morning about kind of the technical glitches that had happened on Saturday night. Which and were, did his clicker die? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, I don't want to talk. I don't, you don't, wanna, I don't, wanna, I don't <laughs> want to. I shouldn't have asked. I okay. don't want to be, no, no, we I don't want to be about more specific because sure, sure. Of, about what, of what I'm about to say. Yeah. But in the conversation on Sunday morning, like I acknowledged to Tim that I know that some people were impacted by that. And mm. I know that the, the problem that was caused for them caused a reaction in them that I understand was for God, their good and God's uh, glory. Sure. And so I think that that we just always need to keep that that lens in front of us. And like I said, Mike Lukens has really helped me because over the I've done this for 15 years and there mm. have been weeks where like, you know, it's 500 degrees in there because the air conditioning went out and yeah. I didn't call. I At that time, I was handling a lot more than I do now and I didn't call the HVAC people in time for them to get here and fix it. And so I'm walking out of here feeling like really bad because mm. people were hot and uncomfortable and feeling responsible for that and mm-hmm. feeling like that's a distraction from what God is trying to do. And Mike Lukens will look at me and he'll say, Rose, do you believe that God is sovereign yeah, over these things right. or not? And That's that right. these are for other people's, you know, these are for yeah. God's glory or not. And I have to admit, it took me, it took me a lot of years of him looking at me and saying that for me to begin to inculcate yes. that, that, and, but yes. that's discipleship, right? Exactly. And what, Mike is discipling me in that. Yeah. Yeah. What better way to humble a congregation than saying, now the, there's going to be a technological issue. Or every so often, fire alarm's going to go off. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like there's the all the, the life, <laughs> the life happens in such yeah. a way that you know God has a sense of humor, and there's just a little bit of like, what are you going to do now, my people? Because yeah. yes. I'm I'm the one working here. You aren't the ones working here, and we yeah. can you know it's it's yeah. a cool reminder, and, and, and is, that attitude it is, it is, is an encouragement. And thanks be to God that right. that's truth. Yeah. What you're right. saying, Caleb. Thanks yeah. be to God that it is not on us. And or, and right. one yeah. on a more personal note, you guys have to understand how impactful it is for our youth and our teens to see it a glitch or a misspeaking happen in this upstairs service because it does not happen often anyone listening to this knows that our services go pretty well all the time 80 percent. <laughs> like like the the mistakes it takes a it takes a professional eye to notice what went wrong during that sermon or service or whatever when our kids realize it, like at FSAT with the technical difficulty where yeah. probably everybody in the room realized something went wrong, that that shows the kids that are exercising their own youth mm-hmm. service and serving on their own youth worship team, it happens. Mm-hmm. It hap- God is using imperfect yeah. people yeah. To, to promote his perfect plan. And, and just don't underestimate the fruit of that because yeah. it humanizes everyone involved. And don't freak out the next time you see <laughs> – Rose, the next time you see a 15-year-old look back at the tech booth <laughs> – 
<laughs> don't freak out and say, oh my goodness, that means something just, didn't yeah, go according yeah. to plan. Odds are that's exactly what that 15 year old needed to realize. Well, there are people up there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's true. There are a lot of people well, serving yeah, to try to yeah. make this happen. The, you know, the dots can connect. And as as we, of course, we've come so far in the 15 years I've been here because let me tell you what, like 15 years ago, probably I, we said 80% of the time. <laughs> 15 years ago, it may have been 10% of the time, right? So we've learned and developed yeah. and grown. But I remember going to like professional concerts. I remember going mm. to the Stephen Curtis con Chapman concert one time and he was like doing the whole um, – uh, Nate Saint story kind of a thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. traveling yeah. around and stuff. And um, so he had all these video clips and stuff that were important to his quote unquote show, right? And so we get there at this concert and these people do nothing but travel around the country <laughs> and do this one concert, right? And like for some reason, this particular event, there were all these technical glitches, right? Like mm. things weren't time aligned and just all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff, right? And honestly, it was exact. For some reason, maybe we'd had a hard couple of weeks around here and things were just not working. Well, probably an encouragement to you. you know what I mean? And yeah. I walked out yeah. of that concert feeling incredibly encouraged in the Lord mm -hmm. because I went, okay, it's not just me. Like these people, <laughs> right. like this is their full time thing. They're professional in this world. And so I do think it can be an encouragement. And I think we have to leave things like our energy level, Tim, or, yeah. you know, technical yeah. glitches at his feet. You know, I'm very disappointed because. At like two weeks in a row, you've had remote control issues during the course of your sermon, <laughs> which like Mark Carey hasn't had, you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's yeah. going on it's there. It's probably me. But it's <laughs> probably when I touch it. I <laughs> no, do. it has nothing to do with your <laughs> touch. Like I could, I could list all the reasons that it's happening, but it's yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But again, all that we're talking about is all, it all fits into, okay, so we were saying about how the word of God spread. We were talking about how the power of God is then being displayed, how yes. Christ is being raised up as preeminent, how the spirit of God is at work in all of that, and then how the word of God is magnified in this, right? Yes. Like it grows, it's mighty. What we're talking about is that happening in the we're using the circumstance of the of the service to describe another place. Mm -hmm. Luke used the circumstances that we saw there in Ephesus, right? And frankly, you'd probably rather write in the scriptures that story because it really paints it. But our story does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And people's story out there over and over, we just don't see it, right? It goes by us and we don't recognize, wait a minute here. Mm -hmm. This is God at work and look what he's doing. Right. And when we get off base, the spirit of God comes in and convicts us of that. And all of it is mm -hmm. so that the word of God might be magnified. Just it becomes more mighty yeah. in and regards to our lives. And just a shameless plug for what's coming. A shameless plug for what's coming. As we roll into the end of Acts, we are going to roll out a tool that will help our congregation look at their stories and their ups and downs right. and see God throughout yes. them, yes. rolling into our global church week, which will help then people expand that from their personal story through right. the story of Fellowship Bible Church and through what God is doing around the world yeah. that we are all part of. So it's really, I I mean, it's I tiny. said it in this meeting this morning, it is, I don't know why we're, I don't know why I continue to be surprised. I. I am just amazed over yeah. and over and over again about how God in the life of this church itself brings that ministry is doing this thing and thinking this way and that ministry is doing and Mark carries over here thinking this way and the worship ministry has this has mm -hmm. this plan. And then when it all kind of when it all converges in one place, you can yeah. just see the fingerprints of God yep. preparing our people and our ministries for that message, yes. right? Mm. And so it's just it's been a beautiful thing for me to watch that unfold as we do the book of Acts and to just have this really cool glimpse into what's going to be happening mm. around here in September and yeah. October. So kind of hang on to your seats, folks, because God is just doing continuing to yeah. do some really cool fun right. things. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Tim, any final thoughts, my man? Nope, that's, that's good it. stuff. It is. I guess we'll sure have you is. back here next week. Uh, Rose, thank you for being here. Oh, you're awesome. It's great. We fun. love it. Super duper fun. Um, yeah. uh, I do just want to point everybody to fbcva.org. We got a lot of ministry starting up for the school year, children's and youth ministry, and we're partnering with Family Life to offer a parent summit. That registration is now open. We highly encourage our parents here at FBC to register for that event. Uh, Five dollars per person or ten dollars per family. We're providing food. We'll have a, a breakout sessions, resources. It's going to be a great time time to hear from myself, uh, Brian Weir, and John Avery, and talk through a little bit about the year ahead uh, and the school year and all these kiddos. So look forward to that. 
Uh, as a reminder, you can find our podcast each and everywhere you want to listen to one. Just type in Sermon Spotlight and it pops right up. The fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love and God bless.